And um, I was wondering, so you are envisioning a future where there will be many different currencies competing within each other, each trying to target a specific need of a segment of the market, for instance. Um, and I guess that those currencies, those cryptocurrencies, will be having some kind, some sort of um, monetary policy linked inside the protocol, yes. right? So how do you envision the link between the monetary policy of these protocols and the needs of people? Yeah. Well, that is, that is a really, really um, interesting question. I think monetary policy is one of those um, genetic traits that really, really um, focuses the environment in which a currency or token can compete. So, um, you know, um, I'll take a slight twist on this because a lot of people ask me this question: Does Ethereum compete against Bitcoin? Um, and I think not. And I think one of the reasons not is because each one has traits that are focused on very specific things. Bitcoin has a monetary policy trait that makes it more suited towards fitting into a niche of um, reserve currency, global trading standard, point of reference for medium of exchange, and things like that. Um, Ethereum obviously is much more focused on maintaining state within contracts in order to be able to enable smart contracts. And those are differences as much as the difference between a, a shark that has skin that allows it to glide through the water faster than any other fish, and a human that has bipedalism, two feet that allow it to walk upright. And to say, you know, do we compete against sharks? Well, if I go into the ocean, I certainly might compete against the shark, and I will lose. And if I took a shark into a boxing ring on land, I would win. <laughs> um, but our domains are entirely separate. Our traits, the very things that make us top successful predators or competing species within one environment, automatically select us out of all of the other environments in which we could fit. There are no universally successful species. Species are specialists, and so by definition, monetary policy is one of the critical characteristics that determines where you fit as a niche. It's what defines Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a brand, but what Bitcoin is fundamentally is a decentralized, limited issuance system. Twenty-one million coins. If it's not twenty-one million coins, it's not Bitcoin. You know, you could say that's part of its birth certificate. That is what defines it. Many of the other things can change, but not that. And Ethereum is smart contracts, and many other things can change, including its monetary policy, but not that. So, um, yes, I think it's really important to look at monetary policy as one of the characteristics, but also the degree of decentralization. Um, the flexibility of the scripting language, but also the security and conservatism of the scripting language, in order to decide where do you think this fits. And here's another piece of news: where you think this fits isn't where it's going to fit, because no matter what you do, as someone who is involved in this space, you don't define the future or the potential evolution of this thing. It's moving. Society is moving at the same time, and everything is changing around it. It will fit where it fits. And we have yet to discover exactly where that will be. And part of the big debate we're having in Bitcoin and in other places is, where exactly does it fit? And you can express an opinion, but you cannot direct, uh, at least in a predictable fashion, where it's going to fit.